Alright, chat. You guys want inescapable blaze. Um. I'm not sure inescapable blaze is better than Legion Guild Mage. They're both good cards. So is Beacon Bolt. So is Artful Takedown. They're all about the same tier of power. With probably Guild Mage and Beacon Bolt and Blaze a little bit better than Artful Takedown. Kind of want to try the Vivid Revival. We never dropped the card. Thanks, side reel. Wait, another donation while I was AFK? I'll have a look. Thanks. Go visit your revival, you fuck. <laughs> right? Like, I kind of want to do it anyways, Gunny Boy. Thanks for the donation, man. Missed the donation. I kind of want to, anyways. Alright. Alright. Why do you even vote? I don't know why you vote. I turn it on to please you guys. It's like giving a toddler, like a rattle or something. Alright. Immediately rewarded. Another green card. Bounty of Might. This deck is already the most fun deck we've played in a week. Not true. We played some really fun ones recently. Most fun fun deck we played today. Bounty of Might, done. All right, next up. What are we picking? We need some multicolored cards. We could set up for multicolored cards with Urban Utopia. Alternatively, Blade Crafter. I think it's too early for Urban Utopia. Strongest card here is Wojak, but Wojak doesn't really synergize very well with that. We Dragonauts are very is it specific. It's not going to be, you're not going to be green and we Dragonauts. So of those cards, Recluse is fine, but not good. The Radical Idea is somewhere else. I always think that she's like chained with her hands up like that, but she's just really excited. And she's jumping for joy while sitting down. So that's, that's impressive. Pass Wall Adept, blue green, no real synergies there. So I think we're a Plague Crafter. Selesnia. Why would I want to do that? Crafter's bad and limited? That's not true. It's just a little bit more situational. Okay, and we don't commit to that color. So Rock Charger is pretty good for us. Sounds hilarious with Bounty of Might. Um, I wouldn't mind getting some white green uh, wilds. Or not wilds. Um, white green whatever. The Unfortunately, the speculative pick is a little bit costly. The trade-off is not picking up one of two very solid pure green cards. So I'm happy to grab the Charger here. And I do look at the votes chat, I just often ignore them. Um, Rock Charger, Siege Worm, Dissident. I feel this Gorgon's not really where I want to be. I don't just want to build another Golgari deck. I want to build something a little different with Vivid Revival and Bounty of Might. Hopefully get to play them. So I think I want multicolors. There's quite a few multicolors in Selesnya that are playable more so than in the uh, Golgari decks. And we might just end up with a good stuff deck too. So let's grab the Rock Charger. It's the most powerful card there. We'll see what we can do. Do I value creatures over removal early in the picks? No, I just value the highest power card there. Mostly removal is stronger. Um, what are we doing with this? Invert and vent. Burglar rat. Crushing canopy. Apothesis. This is so far from where we're going to be, though. We need black green cards and we need white green cards. That's what we need to see. We're not getting either of those right now. Lockets might let us splash a little bit more efficiently, or white red cards work too. Burglar Rats just like fine value. Crushing Canopy, something we'd probably sideboard a lot. I think it's Burglar Rat here. There's an argument for Crushing Canopy or one of the Lockets, but I think um, I think it's a little bit early for grabbing Lockets. First of all, Trooper's not playable, pretty much, which is too bad. Burglar Rat and Sworn Companions are both fine. The Charger is better than the Plague Crafter and the Burglar Rat. So there's an argument for Sworn Companions. Skyline Scout is quite good. Maybe we're aggro Selesnia with Bounty of Might Finisher and we just don't play Vivid Revival at all. So let's pick up the Skyline Scout. Undercity Uprising, not playable. 10th District Guard, not playable. Dissident, quite good. The other card's very unexciting as well. Thought Erasure's all right. More Undercity Uprisings. 
slowly making me want to jam a pen in my eye I'm looking at this card. Uh, pack favor, Golgari, Guildgate, Banneret. Banneret's the strongest card by far. We're pretty far from red right now. And if we were to do red, it's probably a red-white splash for some gold cards. Like maybe, for example, like the big giant at the end, the uh, Swath Cutter. So probably this should be a Golgari Guildgate in case we end up with black removal that we want to splash for. There's a small argument for the Banneret. We can't really splash Bounty of Might. So we're never going to be red enough to use this card. So probably Golgari Guildgate. Inescapable Blaze Wield. Making my head literally explode. Like, I don't even think I can show it on stream, what just happened internally in my head with this card wheeling. The bot's apparently hating to win. That's fair. Um, another Guildgate here. Urban Utopia for fixing seems to be probably where we want to be. I don't mind Righteous Blow as a trick. It's not bad. And I don't mind Bats as a creature, but we're not sure we're in black yet. I think I would rather get fixing while it's cheap. Beam Splitter Mage. That's the type of card we want to see. Both of these are actually the cards we'd like to see. Let's grab the Centaur Peacemaker. I think the card is quite good. I think the Somalia Woodshaper is good too, but I think this is, this is a good body. This is a value card and a little bit slow. It's not great. But it is, you know, this is a super value card, right? So, like, digging up value cards with value cards leads to hilarity. But, I don't know. I think I'm going to grab the Peacemaker first. Clue Spider, second Utopia, Sprouting Renewal. Second Utopia is kind of overboard. We don't actually have anything to fix for quite yet. Let's leave second Utopia out of this and grab first Hitchclaw. Take the Loxodon. Hope not to play it. Crushing Canopy, is this number two? No, I'll take Crushing Canopy one over Loxodon Restorer number two. Uh, is it Guildgate? And a Maximize Velocity. All right, let's take a look. This is pack two. Um, good card for us. The Conclave Tribunal is really solid uh, Selesnia removal. But nothing too exciting with our Vivid Revival pick. Too bad, we're definitely taking it. It's the best card in the pack. It's in the colors we're in. Removes everything. It's decent. Okran Assassin as a card maybe worth splashing for? Probably not. We do have the one guild gate, but there's a totally decent Peacemaker here, although the Peacemaker often wheels. We could take the Luminous Bonds as just another piece of removal. It's probably the best card, and we hope Peacemaker wheels. Just excited about gold cards. I just don't think we're going to get there. So let's take the, the removal. All right, that's exciting. Who wants to splash Nightvale Predators in our Selesnya deck? Because there's apparently a Predator, a Blood Operative, a Beacon Bolt, and a League Guild Mage here on pick three. The bot's having picked three commons over any of the super premium uncommons. Yeah. Um, this is the Guild Mage, I think. This is a finisher. Or a stalled board state. That we can splash. We get a Boros Guild Gate. We're pretty early into pick to pack two. Um, I wouldn't mind a Generous Stray. I'm okay with the Shield Mate, although... Not super excited about Shieldmate. Shieldmate does come back off Vivid Revival. It is a gold card. But I'd rather speculate on the Guild Mage. Swarm Guild Mage. Something else we could speculate on. Another uh, Stall Board State. I would love Chemist's Insight in a deck because I love that card. Um, the other cards are pretty unexciting for us. The Beetle is totally playable but not exciting. We maybe should have some more totally playable not exciting cards. But... I'm like the Swarm Guild Mage here. Let's grab that. I don't know if we're playing it yet. I should drag it up like we're pretending we are. Okay. All right. Rhizome Lurcher. It's a payoff card. We just solidly Abzin. Maybe. Splash for Lurchers. It's a late game card. It's a totally splashable card. We gotta get some two drops at some point, but we got a couple. Let's grab the Lurcher. All right, Okapi, Blue Black Guildgate, Hunted Witness, Crushing Canopy. Not very exciting for us. I should turn off draft voting. I was listening to draft vote earlier, but we have a deck we're now building, so uh, I'm only, I'm okay with the Okapi. It's fine. Not exciting, but whatever. We need some basic creatures. Wood Shaper versus Parhelion Patrol. Parhelion Patrol is a lot better, even if we don't mentor onto stuff. It's still a lot better. It's a two-three flyer, gums up the board. We have two cards we can mentor onto already with it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind the Wood Shaper, but I'm on the Parhelion Patrol pick here.
All right. The Death Guardian, pretty bad. Flight of Equinauts, a hilariously useless card. It's so bad, but it's hilarious. Crawl Foragers, Crushing Canopy. I mean, what would we play out of this? A Hunted Witness? And we hope not to. Sure. Let's take the Flight of Equinauts. Uh, Selesnia Guildgate would be nice. Uh, Generous Stray would be nice. Curve says... Says, what the fuck are you doing with all these random colors in your deck? Curve says, do we need a three drop? We need anything but three drops. Okay. Selesnia Guildgate it is. Cats are better, I think, in the Golgari decks. Like, it's, yeah, it's a, bo a body you can uh, um, convoke out with, but we haven't got one of those yet. Too bad. Uh, Golgari Guildgate seems good, too. Better than the Vigor Spore Worm or the Grappling Sundew. Grappling Sundew is okay. But I think I'd rather, if we're going to try for splashing for some cards, let's splash for some cards. Let's grab the Guildgate. Shieldmate Wield. Uh, I actually would like another two drop, and it's a multicolored card for Vivid Revival, so that's pretty exciting. Hammer Dropper. I don't think I'm splashing for it. Trees of Pack Beast and Hunted Witness. Uh, is there a world in which we run Hammer Dropper? I don't think so. Is there a world in which we run Pack Beast? Maybe? All right, let's grab the Pack Beast. We don't know what colors we're in yet. Week two drop, week one drop. Guess I'll take the week two. And there's a one. And there's a green payoff card. All right. So Deafening Clarion. That's a card I'll splash. I would love to pick up the Centaur, but this card's good enough to splash. We already have been speculating a little bit on some red cards. Maybe we end up splashing black and red and green and white and some other colors. And then like we look at blue and we're like, ooh, nice fancy blue cards. I'll take Deafening Clarion though. There's a red flyer. It's a garrison sergeant. There's black removal. Molder Hulk is a vivid payoff. Molder Hulk's garbage. Not at all excited about Molder Hulks. Mm -mm. Don't have any Boros Guild Gates yet. We kind of like them. Take the Welt. Colors of sideboard cards okay, but the whelp seems to be where this deck is at. I don't think we're close enough to Deadweight. Deadweight is it's a good card. Can I splash it mid-game? Maybe. I'm not actually sure I'm splashing black right now. I mean we could try to make some decisions and try to make some sense of our deck. Our deck is nonsensical right now. Guild Mage and Deafening Clarion are both very strong. Swarm Guild Mage is okay on the stalled board, and Lurcher's okay. But these aren't so exciting that I think I would splash just for these. Maybe. I mean, I like the fact that I can recur these. We just don't have a lot of multicolored cards right now. We're on four. Recurring Deafening Clarion to fucking sweep them again sounds hilarious. I it might be on the Dragon Whelp plan. I don't have so many gates that this looks like a good card. Doesn't really look like a good game card, anyways. But it's either Dragon Whelp, the Collar, or the Dead Weight. I think, I think I'm on the, the the Whelp, which I don't normally like. But maybe this is the card that needs to be in Selesnya. Another Whelp, Blade Instructor, District Guide is right where we want to be. Excellent. Happy to see that. Okay, Wood Shaper, Healer's Hawk, Siege Worm, Arboretum Elemento, and Circuitous Route. I don't think we need to route for this deck. So we're short on four drops. I'd like value. This hits enchantments. This is pretty high value in our deck. It seems weird to pass it over Healer's Hawk, but I have no Convoke creatures right now and no Mentor creatures. So the Hawk is just a 1 1, and I'm not running. Uh, I'm not going to be running uh, Auras. So probably. This is a either a Siege Worm or a Wood Shaper. How am I going to kill them with this deck right now? It looks like I'm probably killing them in the air and then Bounty of Mighting or sweeping their board or something like that. So I don't think I have to have a Siege Worm here. I think I'm on the Wood Shaper plan. I mean, the Siege Worm is good. It's body. We don't have big bodies right now in this deck. Bounty of Might, the damn Hawk, right? I think I'm going Wood Shaper. I might be forever damned with that pick. Another Peacemaker seems good. Let's grab it. 
Inescapable Blaze picks six again. The bots hate value. Hate it. I guess it's not value. I guess it's burst. I guess it's tempo. All right, are we playing the guild mages? Swarm guild mages? We might be. To do that, we really need... We, I really wish we had Boros guild gates. We don't have any right now. I'm not playing cats in this deck. Because I don't have the three drop capacity for it. So I think it, I'll speculate on the guild gate or the color. I guess we should make that decision, huh? How's the deck looking? I don't want to run Hunted Witness. Scout's okay. I don't want to run 10th District Guard. I'll run the Shield Mate. I'll run the Guild uh, the guild Mage. It's like a 5 drop. I'll run the Utopia. The Rock Charger, District Guide, Recluse, Okapai. Peacemakers are okay. Probably don't end up playing the Okapai, but we'll see. Luminous Bonds is good. Definite Clarion is good. These are all good. Guild Mage is getting played. Probably not playing Pack Beast. I'd like to play the Whelp. I'd like to play Vivid Revival, although with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe? Still a maybe there. Six, I guess. And then Restore, I'd prefer not to play. Prefer not to play Vigor Spore Worm. What does this actually boil down to? 22 with these. So we're at 19 playables. Three Gilgari Guild Gates, though, I could just refuse to. I could refuse to put Swamps in my deck. And I could play both these as pretty powerful cards and pretty powerful gold cards. That would really fill out my curve nicely. I think I'm on the uh, guild gate plan. Maybe even the locket. Uh, locket might be my final playable. It does provide black and green mana sources. No, stick the guild gate. It's close. Hawk, second lurcher payoff. Prey upon, but I'm on the lurcher. Let's grab that. Flight of Equinauts again in the Gateway Plaza game. I want to play red. We have no red guild gates. I don't think I can afford two eight drop flyers. It's not like I have a ton of creatures who are tapping to summon them out. And they're kind of on the opposite plan of the Rhizome Lurchers. I think I'm on the Gateway Plaza. Golgari Raiders, Occupy, Witness. That's definitely not what I want. And that's definitely not what I want. I already have one of these and I'm not playing it. So it's probably the Okapi. And I'll side it in versus certain matchups. Undercity Uprising, Erstwhile Trooper. The Dev Guardian is something else I might side in at some point. Put Cullis Vine into a Wild Ceratoc in a Pax Favor. Wouldn't mind a Pax Favor in the sideboard. Don't want the Vine. Boros Locket was a thing I just missed there. Mana Fixing. Second spider for sideboard versus first cat. I'm trying to get value in other ways besides cats. So I don't think I want to run cat. Restore for sideboard. And maniacal rage. Alright, the fact we got no Boros guild gates is really fucking cramping my style over here. I really would like to have played these and now I'm not so sure. Like Deafening Claren is such a powerful effect. Uh, what's the card count right now? 40 exactly. With my guild mages in. And my deafening clarion and my whelp. We got a win condition. It's the flight of equinauts. Creature count is 16. Not um, not ideal for the lurcher, but okay. Problem with the lurcher, anti-synergy with the, uh, the revival, but that's okay. We've got one piece of mana fixing over there in Utopia. And... A gateway plaza, a guild gate, gateway plaza, two Golgari guild gates, three Golgari guild gates. We could do this. Red mana's not going to be that hard. We're going to have to put another mountain. Could make this work. Too bad we don't have the correct guild gates. We have mid game mana sinks off the two guild mages. So many tap lands? Sure. We've got healing. Bring in more healing, too. Maybe we don't play the Hellkite Welt. Although a flyer that kills stuff seems relevant to our game. We have Utopia, Circuitous Route, and uh, Guide to pull lands of the appropriate types.
in the gateway plaza and a mountain. That's five five red sources, really. Forty cards right now. What are the cards I would kind of like to have in here? Like I don't have a big beefy ground right now, so I kind of wouldn't mind having the restorers in. It's just something that does some blocking. They are convocable too. Some twos, have some threes. We'd like to stall the board and hit them with flyers. That's our game plan to win. Well, I was just looking at that. I'm pretty sure route and gateway plaza are pretty bad together. So I'm pretty sure if you pull this, you still have to pay its mana cost. So I would love to play Bounty of Might in a draft. It's been a very long time since I've got to do that. Flight's a win condition. So I'm wondering about Hellkite Whelp versus Loxodon Restore. Like our attackers, air attackers are the Scout, the Charger, the Patrol, the Whelp, and the Flight of Equinauts. Can I really afford to cut Whelp? Maybe I can in some matchups and I just slam down double restores. All right, let's start counting sources. Uh, all right. So this is green. We have one, two, three, four. You don't need this many green. So how many green sources is this? This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight green sources. Probably need at least nine, maybe 10. Let's say 10 for now. Let's say 10 green sources. And then we have five, six white sources seven eight nine white sources so this is ten green nine white so if i don't count the urban utopias and uh district guides as green sources but i count them for every other color so five six seven eight nine ten green sources and then we have one two three four five okay four and three is seven eight nine white sources then we have one two three i don't think i need two swamps here the is supposed to be in later anyways we have three guild gates there. Let's throw in another forest and another plains. So now we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven green sources. And then we have six black sources. And then we have five, six, seven, ten white sources and four red sources. That seems pretty good. All right, let's try it. What do we call it? Surprise, you're dead. I think this is a surprise. This feels like a surprise deck. But surprise was maybe used for burning. Do I want another mountain for the guild gate? Guild mage. Um, no. Why would I want another one? It's not coming down turn two. <laughs> That's for fucking sure. So we have 12 untapped lands, five tap lands. Vivid experimenting, vivid surprise, vivid surprise. Okay. Has a lot of powerful things in it. What it's missing is draw. So it has um, mana sinks with the guild mages. Has recursion with the wood shape, or value rather, with the wood shaper and the revival. It's got wind conditions with the big flyers and the big lurchers on the ground. And it's got early game stall with healing and mana fixing. It looks like it will be okay. All right. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun deck. If it doesn't just get blown the fuck up. And it's nice to play some cards that I don't get to play very often. So we're playing a Selesnya core deck. I never play. It's probably my least. I'm pretty sure it's my last, my least played. Uh, my least played color combination in uh, Ravnica. Okay, no direct removal. It's got a Conclave Tribunal and a uh, and a Luminous Bonds. But you're right, it doesn't kill anything directly. So, pick three wins. That eh, might be. We have a crushing canopy in the sideboard. We do. Okay. 
Yeah, we prefer a slower game that doesn't have us discarding. So I don't know what that means. Is it? We want to play against Is it, who's trying to burn us out, but doesn't have recurring sources of burn, so we can just heal through it. 